1 Corinthians 12 and verse 7. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. Seth, would you stand and ask the blessing on the ministry of the Word tonight, please? Thank you so much. Yeah. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So Paul is teaching about the Holy Ghost. Everybody say Holy Ghost. And what I want to look at tonight is something a little bit different. Uh, the ministry of manifestations, I call it. When the Spirit moves, there's manifestations that take place, and so that is the ministry of the Spirit. Are you with me? And the Bible says, the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man. Now, let me clear up something here. Not everyone accepts the manifestations of the Spirit. Not everyone can be used in the manifestation ministry. I want to say it again. Because God wants every one of you, the Spirit-filled, to be used in this fashion. But most of you are lagging behind. And we need to step this thing up. It's not just in the church, it's out there, you see. We need to anticipate what God is going to do through us and with us for people. See? The manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man. To repeat my phrase, not everyone accepts these manifestations of the Spirit. That's apparent. That's their problem. But more specifically, not everyone can be used in these manifestations of the Spirit. Only as the Holy Spirit wills. And if you try to do it on your own, that's flesh, and then you're going to get spanked. Say, so don't do that, all right? But on the other hand, those set on the Spirit and quench to the point that God has to find somebody else, see? So there's a time and place for everything. Now, experience has taught me that you cannot sit there and make your heart rate go to 100 and 120 on your own. Can you? I know we're under stress, but there's many ways that God deals with us, and you know exactly the Holy Spirit is dealing with you or not about something, don't you? So tonight I want to look at The ministry of the manifestation of the Spirit. Amen. We desperately need that operation of the manifestation of the Spirit in our church. Now, the supernatural cannot exist in entertainment. Now, I want to say that again. Entertainment is not enough. Music's not enough. Talent's not enough. Huh? Any flesh abilities is great, but it's not quite enough to get into what I'm talking about. It's all good in its place. But then God has called us into a supernatural realm that's above and beyond what the natural man can do. And we're lagging behind about a year here. And so I want to remind everyone, it's God's will for all of us that's here tonight and those are listening, to step into the faith. Amen. Now, this word manifestation means an expression of the Spirit or an exhibition of the Spirit or a bestowment. The bestowment of the Spirit. We need the manifestation of the Spirit. Now drop down to verse 11. I said we need the manifestation of the Spirit. Because we Pentecostals can only go so long, and then we've got to have the living water. Now, faith is fine. Coming to church is fine. But when the manifestation kicks in, the light bulb turns on. 
And once you've been in this type of manifestation, or I could say power, you've got to have it. You have to have him. See, oh, you're never going to be happy. Oh, you can be the same, get to heaven and limp in like, you know, Jacob. But God wants us to enter into heaven's pearly gates victorious. Praise God. You know, the joy of the Lord is our strength now, not when we get to heaven. And these manifestations, especially if you're used, energizes you. Makes you feel good. I said it makes you feel good. I know we don't go by flesh feelings, but you know, it does affect the flesh. And a lot of times, a supernatural manifestation of healing can hit us and, and be given to us, granted to us, because of the manifestation of the Spirit. But you've got to be in the right place at the right time and have the right attitude, attitude, attitude. <laughs> attitude affects our latitude and our altitude. All right. Now drop down to verse 11. But all these work that one in the self-same spirit divide into every man several as he wills. Now to repeat, not everyone can be used in the manifestation of the spirit. Only some. How many wants it? Well, this word worketh, but all these worketh, uh, it means to be operative. So the operation of the Spirit, uh, it means to be active. Now there's, now, there's different types of church services. Everybody knows that. There's a time to praise the Lord and a time to be quiet. Uh, you know, as long as it's decent and order in, in the Spirit, I'm cool with it, all of it, any of it. Cartwheels, I don't know, but if you can do a cartwheel in the Spirit, have at it. I'm all for you, you know, but... Uh, you know, it needs to be edifying, of course. Another word, another word uh, in the Greek is uh, effective. Now, we want to be an effective ministry and have an effective church congregation, don't we? But, you know, these manifestations comes to the Holy Spirit gifts, and the, the, the gifts of the Spirit, I'm not on that right now, but the gifts of the Spirit are tied to this some way, and it seems to release the activity of the Holy Ghost. Now, if nobody says anything, sees anything, does anything, well, it's pretty well dead. See? So we need what most of the church pushes out because they can't control it. Good. Who wants to try to control God? We don't know anything. We just follow. See? The Holy Spirit leads us. We do not lead Him. Now, in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 4, by the way, did anybody enjoy the video this morning? I mean, we did our best with the circumstances that we had, and you understand that, I hope. 1 Corinthians 2, 4 then. Paul said this, um, My speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in the demonstration of the Spirit and power. Now, that's the goal for any ministry in the New Testament church, any of the fivefold, and really any spirit-filled believer should have that same desire, see, to be used in the ministry and cooperate in the manifestations of the Holy Ghost. He's going to use somebody, and he might as well use us. The only requirement is to be washed in blood, filled with the Holy Spirit, repent of sins and things like that, and make sure you're in right standing with the Lord, that you're on speaking terms yeah. with God. Amen. Amen. And then it's cool, see? And then be listening and anticipating, uh, you know, that the Lord wants to use you. Now, you'll know when He wants to use you in a manifestation. Uh, it's sometimes it's trial and error, but we learn, and then... That pleases the Lord when we obey and bring Him glory. See, the manifestation of the Spirit brings glory to Jesus, not a man or a woman. But God does use them. So give honor where honor is due, all right? Give honor where honor is due. So he said, the demonstration of the Spirit. Now, that word demonstration, to prove, 
are to manifest. We're right back to manifestation. Greetings, come on in. Um, we're right back to proving something, and it's in manifestation. So what does the Holy Spirit prove? The Holy Spirit proves that the Word of God is a final authority. Praise God. So when God said it, He meant what He said. Whether we believe it or not, He can't change what He said. So we need to line up with what He has said and begin to flow in what I'm talking about. See? It's like you step into another realm, or perhaps maybe another realm steps into you. See? Like one professor years ago, he said, do you have the victory? He asked the question, do you have the victory? And... Um, Someone asked him the question, do you have the victory? He said, the victory has me. So it's not so much you having the Holy Spirit as the Holy Spirit has you. See? Synonymous, but real. Definitely real. So Paul then demonstrated... Now, now listen to this. Paul demonstrated the power of God's Spirit. That's the goal. That's the call. Amen. Now, that's what that verse said. His speech and preaching was not with enticing words of men's wisdom, but in demonstration or proof or manifestation of the power of the Spirit. Now, that word power, is, as you know, is dunamis. And we get the word dynamo, but I like the word dynamite. Now, I know some of you guys that go fishing, you, you'd like to throw a stick of dynamite out there and blow up some fish and go home and have a fish fry, right? You don't catch them legal. Come on, somebody. But, you know, when you get a piece of dynamite, uh, oh, God will not give baby. I talk about the Africans, I'm sorry. God will not give babies dynamite because I don't know how to use it. So there's a certain amount of maturity involved if you want to be used in manifestations of the Spirit. Did I say that okay? Did I say it okay? So I want to encourage you to grow in grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Please grow. You can't struggle and make yourself grow. But if you would just simply stand in the will of God, He will help you grow. And when you show the Lord you're serious about um, this subject, then He'll begin to use you. Amen. Fear not. He'll begin to use you. Now, in Mark 16 and verse 20, hallelujah, Mark 16, 20, they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them. So you see, the Lord Jesus is our partner. We can't do it without Him. He's not going to do it without us because He needs a vessel to work through on the earth. You understand that, don't you? Well, they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them. Now, here's what the Lord was doing. Confirming the word was signs following. Amen. Amen. Now, we've got stop signs out here. Most of you run them. There was one out here, and, the, you know, they took it out. It's dangerous, so be careful when you come around the church. But when you come up to a stop sign, it says something. So signs, then, always point to something or, more specifically, to someone. Ding, ding. So when God confirms a word with signs following, it always points people to Jesus every single time. And that's the ministry of the Spirit. So that's our, our privilege is to point people to Christ by the power of God. And if you give them the correct word at the right time, the Holy Ghost will manifest. But you've got to be able to hear what God once said. And then we simply say what God 
wants us to say under the anointing. Everybody say the anointing. So the fresh oil from the throne is really what we need. See? We need the power in this last hour. Amen. And God has a vast supply of the anointing. Amen. Signs point to someone. That's the first thing. The second thing that signs do is confirm what was said. Amen. Have we forgot about that part? Have we forgotten about that part? We need to expect God to confirm what was said if it was actually scriptural. Or we're just slothful. And uh, I know signs and wonders will not bring faith, but it certainly does get attention. And it will point people to Christ because he's the one that does it, not us. The mystery is, for some reason, he's chosen to use us in this manifestation. Amen. He's going to use somebody. Now, now Balaam, uh, a mule talked to him, and someone said, yeah, God said, use them today. Well, I don't know about that, but uh, I guess that's okay. So who is confirming? Let's go back to Mark 16, 17, and look at this again now. They went forth and preached everywhere. What was they preaching? The good news of the gospel. See? You don't have to get in somebody's face and scream and holler and tell them they're going to hell. That's not witnessing. It's flesh. See? Now, that, you may have to say that sometimes, but then the real subject is the gospel. That's the real subject. And God will always confirm the good news every single time. They'll never get away from it. You might as well claim most people's soul for the kingdom of God and expect the manifestation to hit them. The, the revelation comes when the manifestation of the Spirit is kicking in. No revelation without the manifestation. That's pretty good. Thank you, Lord. No revelation without the manifestation. What's he manifesting? His presence, but his presence rides on the Word. Amen. See? His Word is spirit and life. You can't separate the, the written Word from the living Word, but we can distinguish between the two. The Bible is not Jesus. He is the Logos, though, so that's another subject. So, again... The Lord working with them, that is the Lord God or the Messiah. Which Jesus is the Messiah. And so he's the one that's working with us, confirming his word, not our word. So it's all about him and what he says. Now, if somebody comes to you and says, well, the Holy Spirit tells me this and that, uh... Okay, can I have some scriptures to, to really back up what you're saying? Two or three, not out of text, see? And then, uh, most likely, I'm going to receive that. But if you come and tell me something's contrary to scripture, I'm going to put it on a shelf till I can search the scriptures and see if what you tell me is correct or not. doesn't make you false. It's just that Satan wants to get in and twist the word and... and pervert the manifestation of the Spirit. That's what the devil wants to do. The devil does not care how many dead churches is in Anderson. He rejoices. But let one get on fire for God and see how the devil gets riled up quick. Well, fine. Praise God. I'll take that. I'll take you away with God's anointed few. I started out with Jesus, and I'm going through. Amen. Even forward. Through, same thing. Amen. I said, amen. amen. Well, in 1 Corinthians 14, 22, let's go back there now, please. Hallelujah. Tongues are for a sign. Now, I don't need Sister Sal to get in my face and blab a bunch of tongues. 
I've had that happen to me in my short Christian life. Because Sister Sal wanted to prove to me she was filled with the Spirit. Sister Sal speaking in tongues in my face with garlic breath does not prove to me she's filled with the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Folks, I've seen it all, just about. But on the other hand, when Sister Sal, our brother Mooney speaks in tongues, it's their evidence they're filled with the Holy Spirit, not mine. It's a sign. Everybody say it's a sign. But that sign needs to point to Jesus, not the one speaking in tongues. I know we're human, and we notice, and that's good. We need to respect those that are used of the Holy Spirit, and don't say anything against them now. Ha uh ah. -uh. The Holy Spirit uses people as He sees fit, not as you see fit. Amen. God anoints whom he chooses. You don't have nothing to do with it. Amen. Amen. God calls, he equips, he anoints whom he sees fit. We don't have anything to do with it. See, all we do is cooperate and participate with God's program. It is simple. Well, so tongues are for a sign to them that believe. Not to, not to them that believe, but to them that believe not. Now, let's say we've got a church service here, and the manifestation takes place of the Holy Ghost, and somebody gives an utterance in tongues, not a message. There's no such thing as a message in tongues. It's an utterance. And there's no such thing as a translation of the tongues. It is an interpretation of the utterance of tongues. And so this personality could interpret what is said by the Spirit through the person that's operating the real gift of tongues, and this person could interpret this way, that person could interpret that way. God does not violate your word level or your personality or even your character. But in the end, it must all harmonize toward one direction. Now, let's see. The Holy Spirit is really moving, and people are praising the Lord and everything, and somebody gives the tongues, uh, and the interpretation of those tongues does not go with the flow of the Spirit in the church service, out of order. The only exception would be when a prophet changes the order of the church service. <laughs> Amen. I've learned these things the hard way. And I can save you a lot of grief if you just listen. All right? The rest of that verse says, But prophesying, everybody say prophesying, serves not for them that believe not, but for them that believe. Do I have any believers in here? What is prophesying? Well, first off, not all preaching is prophesying. Very little preaching is actually prophesying in manifestation form. So we're in the normal mode, see, of preaching. And sometimes the Holy Spirit will kick in in a certain way, at least with me from time to time. And something else, it steps up into a different dimension. And the unction comes. And then things begin to happen because the gift of prophesying in the church service brings about a manifestation of the Holy Ghost for people in the church. Now, do we need it or not? Do you want it? I can't make it happen. But when God gets ready to move, we got to move. Amen. Now, so tongues then are for a sign for those that don't believe in the manifestation of the Spirit. Maybe you'd be surprised at how many ministers in our fair city reject the manifestation of the Spirit. Oh, they'll go so far and then cut it off because they can't control it. Well, that's religion. It's out. I don't like it. So then, what actually takes place when these manifestations of the Spirit occur? 
Well, the main thing is God is revealing Himself to you. God reveals Himself to you. Amen. Remember one time we were in uh, Cadway, Zambia, many years ago. Billy and I were in this church, and of course, the manifestation kicks in, and we're given words. And uh, these man and woman sitting over there, I remember this particular instance. There's been scores of these things over the years. And uh, we give a word of knowledge, which is a manifestation. But see, that's just phase one. Phase two, the revelation hits a person, hits the people. And they're shocked. And well, this happened also in Cadbury. It happens with me all the time. And the pastors go, in both situations, nobody knows that. And Billy, the troublemaker, said, God knows it. <laughs> you mean God can reveal things to the one that's being used in the manifestation? Absolutely. In the Old Testament, they were called seers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, it is for today. So God can reveal himself in many different ways, everybody, not just one way. In fact, is the Lord never does it the same way once. That'll kick in in a minute for those of you that are thinking. Because if he did it the same way more than once, then we could mimic and copy because we want to make it happen, and we cannot make it happen. It's done by faith. But it's his faith. And when it kicks in, sweetie, we got the goods. <laughs> Praise God. I like it. You know, if you don't hunger and thirst after what I'm talking about, you're never going to receive it. Never, never, never operate in it. It's not God's will. It is not God's will. God wants all of his family filled with the Holy Ghost to the gills. Praise God. When you get so full of spirit, something's going to give. Something has to give. The last thing we want to yield is our little tongue. Blah, 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 blah. Yes, I know. They come to the altar and they're holy. Yeah, they got a long tongue wraps around that altar. God's not going to use you. Oh, we got some long-tongued people in here. Is that the problem? The seer is starting to see some things. Uh -huh. We need to be careful about now, especially about talking about God's servants, because the Lord is not pleased. Do thy prophets no harm. Uh-huh. Can I go on now? I don't like snakes. If you want to be that way, fine. What's that to me? Amen. Is that a bad attitude? No, I just, I'm just a survival Christian. If I let people dump on me that had me down in a ditch six foot, twice dead, plucked up by the roots, I refuse to get down a water with any of you. Amen. Amen. The manifestation will not allow me to do that. You got to come up. Get on fire for God. Shake yourself like Samson. Too many pet demons. One lady got up one time in, in testimony service and she said, Oh, that devil's been on my back. Bless his holy name. You know, it's just ignorance gone to seed, somebody said. And you got to love people. But, you know, I don't know, sometimes it, it's almost like there's light on in nobody's home. It's almost like. The elevator hadn't gone to the top yet, you know. So the message, the Messiah, listen to this, please. The message of the Messiah will bring the ministry and manifestation. Let me say it again. The Messiah's message will bring the ministry and manifestation the ministry of the Spirit and manifestation. Something's going to give, see? And we need to begin to anticipate and expect signs and wonders and miracles more than what we've seen in our life. 
We've seen miracles here and signs here, but it's been a while, and God's going to bring this thing back around now. It's His will, but we got to cooperate, see. And there's where we need to live. Amen. I think years ago, <clears throat> I was preaching a revival in a small church, and it was pretty bound up. Do you know what that means? It wasn't as bad as some. Some churches I've been in, I couldn't even breathe. It was that bound up. I hope you've never been there. <laughs> but uh, I'm preaching, and God gives me a word for manifestation to take place. So I'm just a wild and crazy guy living a van down by the river, you know. And so I said, all right, the Lord says to me, and they're all dead. No hope of moving them. Are you listening? But God had another idea. So I said what the Lord told me to say. Everybody that gets up out of their pew and come around the stage and walk across the stage, everybody without exception is going to be slain in the Holy Ghost and fall and can't get up. So guess what happened? You probably remember that, huh? Every one of those deadheads, <laughs> God bless them, every one, every one that came across the stage was slain in the Spirit and went out of the power of God. And John Benningfield and Daryl, those guys back in those years, they were stacked up on the stage like cordwood, well, like Kenya. What are we going to do? And they just kept it coming. I couldn't move, and, you know, here they come. I'm talking about a manifestation. Amen. And so John and Daryl were dragging them off the stage, pile them up back here in the aisles and all over the place, and just laughing like a bunch of crazy people. Drunk as drunk. They were drunk. I mean, I couldn't even move. It's like a cloud in that place. Folks, God can send us a kind of glory in now. Come on. And when we step into that glory, man, we're changed from glory to glory. That's what it's all about. I want it. I want it. Amen. Well, that happened in that church. And uh, it was a manifestation. Did I make it happen? No. It was God's will. To show up and show off. Praise God. I like it, see? I like it. Amen. I cannot go to a church, even before I begin preaching, that nobody ever said amen. I mean, if somebody said amen, what? I mean, I've been there. Couldn't even breathe. It was so quiet. Nobody moved around. Their eyeballs moved. That was it. Oh, you know? Shall we gather at the river? That motive, church service. God bless them, but I needed more. So my Baptist brethren give me a Bible. I began to read that Bible. That was a mistake. <laughs> now, I'm not saying they weren't saved, but they didn't know about this manifestation thing I'm talking about. See? And I got to reading the book of Acts. The preacher said, well, that's all been done away with, son. You know, don't worry about it. Don't you get around them Pentecostals. They'll brainwash you. Sure enough, I'm just crazy as a loon. Well, I was watching Billy Graham one night about 40-some years ago. Billy Graham. Thank God for Billy Graham. And I, I was in the Word, and I was reading the Word, and it was almost like God was talking to me direct. Anybody ever feel that way? Anybody? And I would pray for about 30 minutes, and just, just tears fall down on that old Bible. You know, uh, and I was watching Billy Graham, and, and when he got the altar call, a manifestation hit me. And I've talked to prophets. They said, no, I don't know what you're talking about. We don't understand that one. And it was almost like, 
Well, do, you, do we have time for me to explain this manifestation that I experienced? Amen. All right. Well, I was sitting in my easy chair. Tribute was doing something in the kitchen. And uh, the altar call came, and people was running down toward the, the pulpit there on the TV. And this ball of fire hit me in my chest. A ball of fire. But it was inside. And about this big. And it like radiated like, am I scaring anybody yet? Now, I didn't know about this stuff. I was a Baptist boy, you see. But it's real. God is real. It was a manifestation of the Spirit burning the bush. Like this. And then he came up and went down both arms. At the same time, like, and then back, at the same time, and comes back and radiates here again. Now, I don't know if this is five minutes or ten. I don't know. And, and then I, I'm, I can't move, and this ball of fire, which was a manifestation of the Holy Spirit himself, my understanding now. And he, the ball of fire, I explain it for lack of better words, tried to come up my throat and out my mouth. Well, that was a lot to swallow. <laughs> and that's exactly what I did. I, I quenched and I, I was spooked, see. And I, well, not really scared, but just it was unknown. In fact, it's unknown to everyone I've ever talked to that is prophets, apostles, whatever. They don't know what you're talking about. Well, so you better be nice to me because I'm not a mama called individual here. But anyway, this ball of fire began to come out, and I, I choked back down like, you know. And then he's back down here sort of grieved, and then... I'm sitting looking up in, the, in the, the roof of the house. And then, Brandon, you know what it feels like when a catfish pulls on the line? I know you do. The catfish. You can see the, whew. And so that's what happened to me three or four times. I'm sitting there, and then this, fish, this fishing line began to pull on me. Like a catfish would pull on the line. It's exactly the same but I was being pulled up through the ceiling. Now, you got to understand, I'm holding on to this chair. The third and fourth time, and these words come to me. I didn't know the King James vernacular. The words come to my mind, he beckons me. He beckons me. I didn't understand it, but I, I know now. There was a call. Glory to God. It was a call of God Almighty. And I thought I was going to go through the ceiling. But he didn't take me. And then everything subsided, and there I sat. One year goes by. I go down in the valley for one year. Where is God? I don't know. I don't feel nothing. But after one year, and by the way, we had to fire and lost everything. You talk about somebody being purged. You're looking at somebody that's been purged. It costs you. One year, I began to see a light at the end of the tunnel in the spirit realm. And I just began to walk day by day by faith. Trust God. He pulled me out of it in one year. Amen. That's enough of that. But I know what I'm talking about. Amen. Now, when the supernatural contacts the natural, something's got to give. Supernatural hits somebody, a manifestation, and they break and start crying. Some people start laughing. Some people can't stand up. Some people turn a cartwheel, whatever. But you just can't sit and be dead. No, 
God is alive. Uh, he can override. He can override now. You're quenching. Well, he won't override your will. Well, you better talk to me about that after church because when I was sitting in that chair, I had no plans on being caught up to heaven. Our will is not greater than God's sovereignty. Don't you forget that. He knows what we're going to choose. When we choose wrong, he's got a way of bringing us back around and correcting the situation and the mistakes we make because we're in grace and he loves us. But he wants us to come into what I'm talking about or yet have what I'm talking about come into us big time. Then you got to be saved first. Say, the world doesn't, they think you're nuts. Well, they're the ones going to find out. But when the supernatural manifestation takes place, it affects everything and everyone around. Amen. Let me go to a few more scriptures. We'll quit here tonight, Acts 10 and verse 10 and 11, and see what the Holy Spirit might want to do tonight. It all depends. It depends on what we want. Amen. But there is a time and a place for everything. And I'm convinced we all need that catharsis experience in the power. It's not a one-time deal, but it needs to escalate more and more and more until we're more spiritual and natural. Amen. We can see things in the spirit world that the normal person can't discern. And we need that, lest we be deceived in these last days. Acts 10, verses 10 and 11, please, tonight. All right. And he became very hungry. This is when Peter went up to pray on the housetop and would have eaten, but he, as they made ready, he fell into a trance. He fell into a trance. This was not voluntarily. You know, when you come into contact with this kind of power, you can't stand up. Now, folks don't believe that. Well, I can't help what they don't believe. See, all through the Bible, men and women have fell on the power of God. Amen. Sometimes it was voluntarily. Sometimes the flesh just yielded and God took over. Someone said, well, I don't think I believe in them people falling down on the floor. What are you going to do when God starts standing them up? Folks, God has his ways of getting people's attention. I mean, Philip flew through the air. Come on, somebody. Hey, we could fly over to Africa. Wouldn't it cost us a thing? Praise God. Well, look at verse 11 then. And here's what happened. He saw heaven opened. Then, of course, the vessel came down, and, Paul, and Peter received the revelation about uh, the Gentiles. But when you fall under the power of God and a manifestation hits you, then God wants to do something. He wants to show you something. Like Peter, he saw heaven open up. Amen. One manifestation in, in Arkansas, I can go on. I, I can't. I'm going to have to shut this off. But I was in a church, and uh, the steel player, the great music. and But the steel man was so discouraged and depressed and and uh, I could see it and feel it, discern it. So when I get up to minister, I, I'm going along here and teaching and preaching, whatever. And while I'm saying something, God is saying something else to me. See? He said, steel player. That was it. It's all God said, steel player. Because I knew what he was talking about. And then I saw a manifestation come down out of the ceiling you ever see Mr. Bean, Mr. Bean, come down? That's the way it was. It was like a spotlight about, oh, four feet in diameter, perfectly round, come right down out of the ceiling and shine on the floor in the aisle of the church. I could see it. Then I give the word to this steel player. I said, the Lord says, steel player, that if you will come and get in this beam of light that's coming out of the ceiling, God is going to do something for you. I don't remember the rest of it. It's been several years. So what's he do? 
he gets up and just <laughs> really beat up by the devil. He, get, he comes around, and to my surprise, he gets right in that light, right in that beam of light. He gets right in it and stands there. Now, he didn't know where it was, but I did. And then, bam, down on the floor he went. Ezekiel chapter 3 and verse 22. How many times have you seen that beam of light? Only once. What made it happen? God did. <laughs> God's got the special blessing for you people. Don't let Satan rob you now. Come on. I mean, it, it'll be different than others, but it's still the Holy Spirit. He can manifest any way he wants, if you want him. Amen. So while Peter was under the power, he got the vision of heaven. Uh-huh. Ezekiel chapter 3 and verse 22 to 24 now. Ezekiel, dear Lord, what a prophet. And the hand of the Lord was there upon me, and he said to me, Arise and go forth into the plain, and I will talk with you. I'd like to have God tell you that. So what did he do? Well, then I rose and went forth into the plain, and behold, the glory of the Lord stood there. Could you imagine seeing the glory of the Lord standing in front of you? Could it be something like that, that beam of light that I saw? Could it be? Well, the glory was standing there. And as the glory which I saw by the river Chebar, and I fell on my face. Now, I don't know if that was a voluntary falling down or he couldn't take the power, but I'm going to say it's the latter. <laughs> then the Spirit entered into me. Oh, glory to God. Well, no, they didn't have the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament. No, they did. <laughs> and he set me upon my feet and spake with me and said to me, Go shut yourself within your house. I won't go any further. The, the, what, the point I'm saying is that the manifestation brought forth a revelation and guidance. Direction. How many need some direction from God? God promised he would guide us and lead us. Beside the still waters and restore our soul. He, he promised these things. Amen. And this is one way direction comes when you're in the manifestation. Kind of like the guy that was trying to get in the water and get healed in the, in the Gospels. And every time the water would be moved by the angel, somebody else would beat him in there. Years and years, 30 some years, I think it was. So, in, in like manner, when the Spirit's moving and you know it, you need to get in there. Where are we getting into? Another realm. We've got to understand, folks, if you're born again, you have access to another dimension, another realm. And faith and the grace pulls what we need into manifestation in the present. Praise God. Never be the same. Christianity is great, man. It's not boring. Come on now. I'm talking about a supernatural God, and God is. Amen. So we need direction. Acts 2.17, please have a little patience now because we need to get this. Acts 2.17, it shall come to pass in the last day, said God, I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. There's that manifestation, just a different way. And your sons and your daughters will prophesy. There's a manifestation. And uh, young men should see visions. Old men dream dreams. Yeah. God can speak to us that way. That's a manifestation of the Spirit. It's a ministry manifestation. The last verse tonight is Hebrews 2.4, and then we'll stop with this part of it then. Hebrews 2.4. How many wants what I'm trying to speak about tonight? It's difficult to explain these things because we're talking about someone from another world. 
Holy Ghost came from another world. Actually, Dake believed that heaven is a planet. I can't disprove it. Sounds good to me. If heaven's a planet, Holy Spirit came from there. <laughs> Hebrews 2, 4. Now look at this. God bears witness with them, both with signs and wonders. Everybody say signs and wonders. Okay. And with divers miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost according to His own will. Amen. I just say, Lord, is it your will for us to have it? His answer is yes. That Jesus died on the cross so that we could receive these blessings from the Spirit, even the Spirit Himself. He brings it to us. Do you want it? You'll never be out of control. No. Don't say, oh, I couldn't help it. God, you know, I got out of control. No, God doesn't make any of his children go out of control. But we do yield. And sometimes we might look a little weird. People might think that we're in the flesh. But what are they doing when they're judging you, huh? Come on, somebody. So... If I'm beside myself, it's to God. Amen. Somebody said, you're crazy. Well, I'm crazy for God. See, this is the deal. Now, it takes faith to step into this, but it also takes time to understand what in the world is going on. And about the time we got it all figured out, it's time for us to leave. See, life's short. So we got a choice tonight. Amen. Let's stand up, please. Thank you for listening to me. I tried my best to get that across. Uh, I'm just saying there is a manifestation that the Holy Spirit does in our midst. Amen. The greatest manifestation of all is a new birth. How in the world can a person be born again? It's a spiritual birth. How many have experienced that? I know you have. How many need to experience a new birth? Anybody? It's like born from above. That is a manifestation of God. The only way to receive that eternal life is to believe on Jesus and accept Him as your Savior and Lord. No other way. And then when you do, the blood's applied to your life, and then the Holy Spirit, who is love, comes in to live inside of you because of the merits of Christ, not your own righteousness and holiness. He's free, and then you'll be changed, and you'll be on your road to become mature and walking in these manifestations that God has for us. So I'll ask again, does anybody need to be uh, give their life to Christ tonight?